Sadly, the Manchester United Brentford Nottingham Forest project that we've been working on for a while just doesn't seem to be working out as well as I'd hoped. You have no dominant tactics, you have no dominant teams, uh, and it's just, it's kind of a crapshoot each and every time. But will the 2-3-2-3 be any different? Let's check it out. Yes, this is a 2-3-2-3. It is, seems to be a fairly defensive tactic. You've got a bunch of people behind the ball. Uh, a lot of support, not quite attacking. So I definitely don't expect this to be any real different from a lot of what we've seen, if not a lot worse. Brentford and Nottingham Forest, would I can see them using this tactic in terms of keeping the ball outside of their goal. But in Manchester United, I do not see them flourishing whatsoever. In this tactic, as you can see, it is a 2-3-2-3. I have no idea what tactical style this is, but mentality is cautious. So off the bat, we know it's not attacking, yeah, especially because you have one attacking player in the entire thing. But goalkeeper, defend. You have two central defenders on defend. You have two wingbacks on support. You have a ball-winning midfielder on support. A deep-line playmaker on support. A Mazala on support. Two inverted wingers on support and an advance forward on attack. I, yeah. By the way, in the Steam Workshop page that I got this from, there is nothing about it. Um, I was just looking for two up front, uh, you know, tactics that had the two up front. This apparently was not there. So I don't know why it's a 2-3-2-3. Two, three, two, three. I guess 2-3-2-3. Two, three, two, three. Seems like a misnomer to me. But that's what I got. That's what I looked at. This is what we have. In possession, you've got a standard attacking with uh, nothing really. I mean, passing directness is more direct. Tempo is slightly higher. Pa uh, play for set pieces. This seems to be a tactic for your really lower areas uh, on the table. But the counter, distribute quickly. That's it in transition. Uh, high press line of engagement. Much higher defensive line. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Trigger press much more often. Stay on feet and then step up more. And that's really it. Uh, as usual, no opposition instructions. If we look at the Premier League, at the table, let's look at the table. Uh, you can see Man City handily winning at 94 points. Liverpool in second with 89. Manchester United don't get any European spots whatsoever and end up in seventh. 16, 10, and 12 with 58 points. Brentford in 16th place, 7, 11, and 20 with 32 points. And then only two points down, relegated Nottingham Forest in in 19th place, 8, 6, and 24, 30 points. Brighton dead last at only 28. So there's not much of a difference right here in that 15th all the way down, uh, which is just horrific to see. But Brentford and Nottingham Forest not doing well. Manchester United not getting to where you'd want in Europa spots uh, or European spots. But schedule-wise, this is Manchester United starting off the season not very well until you get to Southampton. And then, I mean, you have a nice unbeaten run until Sturm Graz in the European in League Group C. Um, overall, the first half of the season is not too bad. A win against Nottingham Forest, uh, sandwiched between losses against Real, uh, Real Sociedad, Fulham, and then Aston Villa. Valencia, one friendly. That is it. Second half of the season, an awful January yet again, as we've seen before. But really, um, March, not great, but a fantastic April. And then a just half and half May finishing out the season. So as you can see, they do lose out against Milan. Uh, who else? They lost out in the FA Cup against Bournemouth and the EFL Cup. Where did you lose? 1-2 to against Fulham right there. If we look at Brentford's schedule, starting off the season, a great with a win against Wolves, but then horrific all the way down to a 1-0 win against Southampton and then awful again until a 1-0 one, one win against Leicester. A couple more friendlies, which is nice. I don't know why people don't do friendlies during this period. But then, man, they can't find their first win after the World Cup until April. The end of April, April 25th against Leeds, a fantastic 5-0 thrashing. And a great run until the end of the season, 0-3 against Chelsea. But this would have fired me in a heartbeat. No questions asked. Uh, so out in the FA Cup, 1-0 against Lincoln City. Lincoln City. And then EFL Cup out really early in penalties against Aston Villa. Not doing very well whatsoever. And I don't expect any better right here. A nice win starting the season against Fulham 2-1. But then nothing until 2-1 against Brentford. There you go. Uh, and then 2-1 against Southampton. They like the scoreline. 3-2 against Newcastle. Lo there's that losing out against uh, Manchester United 0-3. No friendlies whatsoever in December. 
And then three wins, and that's all they could muster. A win against Aston Villa, West Ham, and Bournemouth. Not by much again. West Ham is the biggest, two to, no, two to nil. But overall, look at this. Just, oh, awful. That sea of red. But out against Crystal Palace in the FA Cup, uh, third round is nil two. And then EFL Cup, nil one against Brighton. Really just horrific seasons altogether. Stats-wise, most goals, Manchester United in eighth with 54. Fewest shots, eighth with 447. Fewest conceded in eighth with 46. Most shutouts not even in the list. Most tackles won. There's Brentford at least in eighth with 808. And then that's pretty much it. Seventh for Manchester United with most points per game, 1.53. Uh, this is definitely not a dominant tactic whatsoever. Clearly not a plug-and-play tactic. Uh, most goals, Holland clearly with 40. Ronaldo with 15. Most assists, nobody. Most player of the match, nobody. Uh, I mean, overall, just awful. Awful, awful, awful. There you go. Jesse Lingard, Nottingham Forest with 103 tackles. Uh, most in the league, with five, with, in fifth at least. Most key passes, nothing. Most shots. Ivan Tooney with 117. But 15 goals over all that. So definitely not a great time to be any of these clubs with this tactic. Uh, but if we look at home, Manchester United, 19 goals for Ronaldo overall. 701 highest average rating for him. Marcus Radford and Sancho with seven assists apiece. And then most player in the match awards, Ronaldo with five. So Ivan Tooney with 16 goals overall. Keen Lewis Potter with 699. Not too bad average rating. Uh, most assists, Darmsgaard with five. And then most player in the match awards with Keen Lewis Potter with four. And finishing out with New, uh, Nottingham Forest, Iwoni at 13 goals, uh, Niakate with 6.81 average rating, most assists, Jesse Lingard with 6, and then Iwoni with 3 player of the match awards. Yeah, I'm really not going to say it again, besides this was just awful. I'm not, I wouldn't even look at this. Uh, unless it's, if it was for a specific team, I would love to have known that because they didn't put anything in there, uh, which is always, you know, a red flag. So anytime you're looking in the Steam Workshop for a tactic you might want to use or take a look at at least, yeah, look at those. And if they don't put anything, maybe just keep walking. So anyway, that is it for me, Sefian FM and the Football Manager Blog Channel saying thank you so much for watching. Take care and enjoy. Mm -hmm.